welcome to the webinar on quality of youth exchanges. We call this webinar from idea to project application. Yeah, so we're gonna look at what are the steps, uh, what happens uh, from the very beginning when idea pops up until the moment when actually you have a project and you have a project grant. Um, and uh, this webinar is part of the massive open online course on Erasmus Plus funding opportunities for youth. Um, so this MOOC is happening already, it's a sixth edition. Uh, we are organizing uh, this online course since 2015 with more than probably 4,000 learners who already completed the course. And this is special year, uh, this year, because the course is ongoing. It started in February and it goes on until the end of the year. So actually, if you're watching this webinar and you think, oh, I never heard about this course, no problem. Uh, you can easily uh, enroll to the course and get access to all the materials we have. And at the end of this webinar, I will look through some materials, especially focusing on youth exchanges, uh, but you can find a lot of material there on youth worker mobility, on strategic partnerships, on structured dialogue, on cooperation between program countries and partner countries, and what these two words mean also. Uh, so there will be a lot of resources, and um, um, my colleague Nerius, uh, who is helping more technical part, will also post in the chat the enrollment link. Those watching on Facebook, uh, you will see an enrollment link to the course um, in the comments below. Um, so you can really catch up with the content and you are never late for our course and you're always selected to our course because course is unlimited um, for any amount of learners. Uh, and this particular sixth edition is uh, financed and coordinated by the German national agency, Jugend für Europa. Uh, so thanks to our supporters and uh, we go on. And uh, today in the webinar, we have um, two guest speakers and by now uh, more than 30 participants. So the flow today will be uh, this, that at first we'll start from um, Emil Wingren, who is a youth worker, who works with young people and actually does what the name of the webinar tells, uh, supports young people in implementing their own ideas, yeah? Their own ideas and kind of guiding them uh, in implementation of youth exchanges. Uh, and youth exchanges need money and support. And that is why the role of national agencies is very important. And that's why we have uh, uh, Pavo, uh, should I say Pukonen? Uh, yes. Uh, so, uh, Pavo is from the Finnish National Agency, he works with youth exchanges for already many years and he has a lot of knowledge about that and he will present uh, the uh, kind of approach of the National Agency and especially the importance of youth involvement in youth exchanges. Plus, Pavo is going to share some exciting resources, how you can learn more about youth exchanges. If you never did any youth exchange, if uh, you never heard about it, or even if you heard something, there is still always certain things to learn more. So uh, that's a brief intro, and I think we can go to Emil, and uh, maybe you can also tell a little bit briefly, like, uh, you know, where exactly you're from, um, what is kind of your working environment, and uh, also, uh, other people um, can ask questions. So you can use the chat and make sure you click everyone so everyone can see your questions. Uh, and you can ask questions there. Those who are watching us on Facebook, you can write questions in the comments uh, and we'll make sure we um, yeah, voice these questions. So Emil, uh, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you. And hello, everybody. Nice to see some faces here also. I was afraid I'm going to speak to my own picture only and that would have been sad. So yeah, I greet you from the tiny town Nykarleby in Finland and I am going to share the screen here to ask Google where I am. 
uh, and show you. So, oops. Um, here is Europe and here is Finland. And I have the chat window uh, in front of the, 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 the zoom in, but we will do it like this. So there you see, it's so small, it doesn't even have a, a, a name, but I'm, I'm sure the only one who has been here of you is, is Pavo, and I'm, I'm happy for that. Uh, now I wanna, I wanna e exit the screen. No, wait, I'm gonna ask Google again uh, about some pictures also. Um, do you see it? Yes. Yes. Here is some. If we press Nikalebi on Google, we will see that. You will see a, a, a nice river and a small, small town. Yes. That's it. Uh, now I want to go out of the screen sharing. Where do I do that? There should be a red button stop sharing on the top, usually. On the top of your window. Or I can stop your sharing if you want. Stop me. <laughs> stop <Yeah>. me. <laughs> All right, great. Uh, yes. So I'm going to talk to you now uh, for like 15 minutes about, about our European youth work and uh, my view and our way, way to do it. Uh, I know you, many of you have a lot of experience in the, in the area, but it's always nice to, to share and compare and I'm happy to, to get the invitation to be here. Uh, yeah, so I work for the, for the municipality or for this, for this small town and that's uh, by, by that organization we do the projects. And uh, it, was, it was 13 years ago I got, uh, I got the question suddenly that, do you wanna go on a travel? It's free. You go as a leader for six girls and you also get paid for it a bit. And I was like, what? what's the catch on this now? And <laughs> there was no catch. And of course I, I wanted to do it. And uh, that was my first youth exchange and my first experience of European youth work whatsoever. And uh, it, it was crazy. It was not well arranged, but it was still an amazing door that opened to and that became a big part of my life. And so I wanted to, I wanted more and I wanted to learn how to do projects myself and uh, to see what it, it could be if you arranged it better or in a different way and uh, together with, with the youths. So after that, year by year, I, I took over all our youth work piece by piece and uh, kept doing more, more and new projects. Uh, to be truth, uh, a lot of the work I do, it, it, was, it was more fun the first years you did it. Uh, but the exception is the youth exchanges. It's, it's, it's still equally fun and it, it's still the greatest thing ever. So therefore I uh, like to to talk about this and invite new people to this world of youth exchanges also. Um, we try to travel on a youth exchange uh, every year and we arrange a youth exchange every second year. So, so it's no ma mass production, but we are doing it every year. And uh, our last projects was, they looked kind of similar to what our projects looked like 10 years ago. But uh, the way of doing it and the way of looking at it has changed, uh, mainly in the way that it's been for me like a 10-year process of, of stepping back, giving more responsibility to the youths and seeing that the, the main value is in the process and uh, and uh, it's not a ma about making a, a perfect event. And this is still ongoing. I, I learned by every uh, project. Um, yeah, when planning for this, this webinar, I, I figured out uh, 
six points for for uh, success in this in this topic. And uh, number one, the, the the base of everything you do it is is create create a good relation to the youths. Uh, that takes time and effort. Um, I want to be a team player uh, to create openness and 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 trust and. I don't want to be a teacher telling the, the, the kids what you should do this and you should not do this and so on. So th th that's important. Uh, number two, the youths make the ideas. Uh, some ideas are great, some are not, but I still say, yes, let's do it. Uh, at least in the beginning. Uh, like for example, Mm, we were planning a youth exchange on topic of health, nature, and creativity. And one girl wrote on a post-it like nature music. And I said, whoa, wh wh I have no idea what that is, but this sounds great. Let's do it. Uh, and uh, this brings us to point three, which is uh, follow through their ideas. Um, support them to evolve the ideas but but don't change them to something else uh, the youth need to experience that uh, that whoa i wrote this seven months ago on a post-it and now we actually did it so yes seven months later 40 international people went out to the forest made music and that became one of the most rememberable moments of of that project. And uh, point four, uh, give them responsibility. As I mentioned before, uh, it's, easy, it's usually easier if you do it yourself or if you tell them exactly what to do. But no, uh, we should step back, we should support them, trust them and uh, embrace the failures and uh, try to make the best out of that because it's in the it, it's in this process the the learning happens and uh, the learning is the, the result we want uh, number five do the work and the play all of you together so do the cleaning collecting the equipment arranging the rooms and uh, all these boring tasks builds the feeling that it, this is our project. We did we did the work, and uh, if it feels too boring to start with, I I, I use the tool of pizza to to you know <laughs> get the get the youths more interested in it from the start. Um, and also yes do the play together. I try to take part on everything in a, in a project, uh, like uh, either as an observer or a participant to be, be there on every activity. I have a fly in here. Uh, number six, humor. Do stupid things. Laugh together at ourselves and at, at each other. This will make it so much easier when you when you later need to talk about more more difficult stuff so yeah that's that's the six pillars i i wrote down now for this and uh, now a bit more uh, practical about how we how we do it so I know many of you don't have a, a youth group that meets regularly, but uh, I, and that's also fine. Uh, but I have, I have an international club, which uh, we meet on a set time once a week. Um, most youths are 13 to 17 years old, so they are quite, uh, I work with quite young youths. They register in the autumn for one year. Um, and on the club meetings, we do a lot of getting to know each other, a lot of team building and learning in the multicultural topic. 
and we prepare ourselves for traveling, for youth exchanges, and and we plan and do youth exchanges. So, uh, Emil, Emil, can I can I ask here? You mentioned the age that you mainly work with uh, 13, 17 years old. Yeah. Um, I can notice a tendency that many organizations tend to usually involve people over 18. Yeah. Uh, would you have some arguments from your experience? Why would it matter to do it with the younger people? Well, I think this uh, depends a lot on the culture where you come from also. That the maybe more here up north, uh, youths want to you know after they're 18 they they have they can travel by themselves so i think the need is is when they're younger to do this as a first first travel project without their uh, parents and uh, then they can go on to evs or uh, solidarity course <laughs> excuse me and stuff like that so yeah, yeah, I know many projects are from 18 and up, and it's of course a bit different. But, um, yeah, uh, the goal is that we we go on a youth exchange every year, and uh, sometimes it doesn't happen the first year. So it might be they are they are on the club meetings for more than a year before they go on a youth exchange so it can be a long process uh, but it's it's always here at the at the club that the project starts we ask the question do we want to do a project and we, and the youth say yes we do and uh, uh, for for the new youth they at this point need to 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 learn a, a bit what is what is a european youth exchange because most people don't know and it's it's difficult to get going even the, doing the first steps if you don't if you don't know what it is and also to to get the extra motivation because the older youths who have been on a project they know how good it is so so they can motivate uh, also the the newcomers for this because like which 14 year old want to spend hours and hours making an application for a project happening in a year it's like that's an eternity for a for a young teen so you need to be motivated and know that it's something good is is coming uh, what is this um, uh, kind of driving force for people, what do you think? What keeps them still doing something that might happen in one year, also might not, yeah? Because when you apply, you also kind of never know mm -hmm. exactly what, what people are looking for the most, actually, when they start engaging in this process. Mm. Well, I, for me, as with this ongoing group, it's, it's like an, I see it as an organism also that the, the older infects the new ones and uh, then they they learn they have a collective uh, knowledge they know how that uh, that it's it's uh, it will be good and yeah. uh, i also a goal for me is for every meeting that we will have fun also uh, because if we uh, if we do things that the youth think is boring then they come here on their free time if if it's boring they will most of them won't come <laughs> next week so uh yeah also have fun do a bit of work for the project but the fun is very important and uh, yeah. motivation of course and if you could go uh, briefly because we have this kind of topic of from idea to application uh, mm -hmm. so you gave some principles how to deal with young people Mm -hmm. If you would say, what are the kind of key steps for you when, from the moment when people say, oh, we want to do something, as you said, music and environment, what was it? Um, you know, so like, okay, what are the main steps until people arrive at the common project? Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, as I said, with the with the motivation also that it's it can feel big and a long time and you know so so I I want to keep it simple from the beginning and the best thing is to to start brainstorming what do the youths want to do. So this this is the starting point, uh, and then. Uh, add the questions that why do we want to do it and how can we do it so so practically we meet we we produce a lot of post-its with activities we would i would like to do this i would like to do this and uh, from that on we 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 discuss and select and evolve these ideas and uh, uh, the the part where my input is is mostly needed it's the moment when we we try to discover a theme and needs to see how it fits to the erasmus plus uh, program to you know find something okay youths don't want to be out they want to do sports they want to play games okay well we can we can get that to some kind of health team and maybe add something so yeah, we put a lot of effort in the from these post-its to make the, the daily schedule for the project. So we make a detailed daily schedule. And uh, I also quite early put the names there. Okay, this is the workshop, this activity, who will do this? So there we put two names of two, three youths, and that will give give them a responsibility also they know this is this is this is mine uh, so do you want to say emil that uh, the program is actually also done by by participants and it's not you doing all the work yes yes uh, the the daily program is is all made by the youths uh, and uh, and then parts are made by the the other groups from other countries. Um, if we talk a bit of, uh, of partners also, there was some in this info about this, there was about how you choose um, or find partners. For us, when we've been in this area such many years, we have quite a, a network of of, of good partners so so I'm in a good position we can kind of choose everybody wants to <laughs> wants to be be in our pro project and we can, can kind of be choose and therefore I can also put demands on the in, on the international partners I I, I I demand them to write in the application and I I demand input from their youths also so that there are there are also in the application in some input from from the youths in in all countries um, yeah and it's i mean if you if you're a newcomer in the area i maybe the others of you have have better suggestions how you find good partners and so on because it is it is essential to to have good partners who have this like a a view of youth work that that sometimes how connects with with yours mm. uh, maybe meanwhile i will check with nerius if there are any uh, questions either from facebook live or here from the chat mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, we have more reactions rather than questions. Uh, let's see, Mark from Facebook saying, uh, do stupid things makes it easier to talk about more serious things. Yes, so I think uh, he's agreeing with a uh, uh, message sent. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, Bruno says that could be a motto for his life. And uh, then it's also the question about uh, under 18. Uh, some people are uh, commenting that, yes, exchanges should be better promoted to uh, under 18. So that would be somebody from uh, uh, Facebook commenting. And in our chat on uh, Zoom, uh, uh, Pavo is saying that never underestimate the power of food. 
to interest uh, teenagers. Uh, Daniel is saying that, uh, of course, impact and the learning process is bigger on teenagers than uh, 18 plus. Uh, so that would be maybe a comments uh, and reactions to uh, what Emil was sharing. Mm -hmm. Yes, and uh, later we'll look at the um, MOOC environment and we do have some resources on partner finding and principles of partnership and, and where people can actually look for partners and mm -hmm. what makes it to be a good partnership. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I think my time is uh, running is up. up. Right, so yeah. should we should we end it here and we can... Yeah, and I, I think we can continue with, uh, uh, with Pablo more from the kind of the approach from the national agency. And anyway, uh, I encourage people not only listen, but to reflect, think, uh, what does it mean in your practice? And if you still want to ask some questions, please do so. We'll try to respond. Uh, and if we won't manage with that, we can move on the discussion uh, back to the online course discussions. So now I'm giving the, thank you very much, Emil, for your input and for your experiences. Cool principles of working with young people and uh, it was good to hear how you do your work. And now we're switching on uh, to Pao, who is now probably in Helsinki. Yep, Helsinki, Finland, the capital of Finland. And hi everybody, it's nice to talk to uh, talk to people i also take care of, of of organizing trainings when when they are the actual trainings when we meet and i enjoy meeting other people and uh, many times i deal with uh, youth exchanges because that's the project type that i've been working with over 16 years in the finnish national agency um well shall we just go to the presentation i will my idea is to to explain you one way of working with the young people and and the tool that we have created for uh for doing that like you heard uh from emil's uh, presentation that um what we uh really support here in finland is that the youth exchanges are exactly young people's projects that they make themselves rather than projects that uh, adults have made for young people and recruit the young people later. Um, there's a story behind this. Um, you probably understand that these uh, funding programs in Europe, they don't just fall from the sky. There's a lot of politics behind and there's uh, lots of planning and lots of fighting for the funds. Uh, when Erasmus Plus program started, uh, it was a very difficult thing. There, there was uh, a youth program with funding that was called Youth in Action. It was a separate uh, uh, pro program that was funded from a separate budget line. And the lifelong learning program that was uh, where the formal education programs were. When it was decided that all of these would be go under the same uh, same program, Erasmus Plus, the first thing that the colleagues from the high, uh, uh, formal education part said was to question that why in the youth program we would have these one week long holidays for young people to Europe. They were referring to the youth exchanges. This is how youth work is many times seen from, uh, from, from the outside. And also I'm very well aware of the fact that the youth work is very different structurally and, and uh, in, in the different countries in Europe. Um, the colleagues in the commission had to explain them very carefully the original idea of youth exchanges. Youth exchanges are not one week trips abroad. They are long term learning experiences. It means that the original youth exchange that is still something that we always teach everyone to do comes with the idea of the participating group and uh, 
And then exactly like somebody said in the chat, the adults role is to support the groups in creating their own project. Um, can we go to the next page, Limonas? It was rather hard sometimes to, to um, explain this to many people in Europe because I'm also aware of the fact that there are lots of youth exchanges that have been made by adults. They have been applied, they will be granted, and then the young people or normally young adults, university students will be recruited after the granting. And then when Finnish groups uh, started contacting groups in Europe, they found out that they had really different ways of working in many times. We wanted to create some material that would highlight the fact that the young people can be involved in on every stage of the youth exchange from, the, from its very uh, beginning to its very end. We created this kind of uh, map or a poster that uh, shows the whole process of youth exchanges. Many times youth exchanges are referred as the step seven, where, uh, which we say is the actual youth, youth exchange when you go abroad or you host a group in your country. But with this map, you could show to your uh, group of young people as well that it's actually a longer process and it takes a longer time and there are lots of things that you have to have to be involved in during during that that process. So uh, we cut the youth exchanges in in nine different steps that start from uh, building a group of young people who is interested to finding partners, creating the project together, creating the application, waiting for the decision, uh, preparing for the actual exchange, then having the exchange then taking care of dissemination and uh, then reporting. And I can tell you that young people can be involved on every single step of these, this process. Limas, can you put the next one, please? So the map itself is, uh, ex explains something, but then uh, you might understand that youth exchanges have a lot of things to think about. We had the other side of the map looked like this. On every step, we had four different uh, parts. We would explain uh, what are the important uh, rules of the program that you have to respect regarding this step. Then we had an um, example from somebody who has been making youth exchanges. This is how I was involving my young people on this stage of project planning. Then we had also a part saying that don't do this because you might regret it later or it doesn't really work that well, or it's not simply a good practice. And then we also had a step saying, this is where you can write it in the application if you, when you're filling in the application. We also produced this kind of leaflets that uh, give examples on how to deal with a topic as an exercise. They're not really like that do this, but it's more like that this is what you can do and this is what you can have a base when you're creating your own, own projects. Next one, please. If you saw the back of the map, you see that it's a lot of text and it might not be the most approachable thing. So at uh, the time came when we decided that it might be easier to create a digital version out of that. Um, so um, we have made the map into videos and exercises on the staroveurope.eu website. And this is an open uh, platform that anybody can use. And uh, it still has the same structure as the map. It still has the same advice and, and uh, do's and don'ts and uh, rules that the map has, but it's maybe a bit more uh, approachable. So uh, the 
The website is starofeurope.eu and you can go there. Uh, actually, Limonas, if you stop sharing now, I could share, share the screen from, oops. Here we go. So the, the web page looks like this. And as you can see, there are nine, uh, 10 playlists. Nine of them are the same steps that we have on the map. So there's a playlist for each of the steps. If you go to the, uh, to the step itself, uh, then you can see what's under it. There are mandatory uh, tasks and there are optional tasks. And uh, every step has two different uh, videos that uh, explain the basic idea of that step, how you can involve your young people in that step. And uh, it also has the possibility to download the script in, in a writ written form. Um, I wonder if we just, you know, watch one video here. Do you think it's all right, Limonis? I think we don't have time for that, so. Okay, that's fine. We can discover themselves, Oops. yeah. Sorry. <laughs> the other thing is that um, the, the important rules of the program is always on the step three. So you can, we have collected can, what we call eligibility rules uh, under this step. So you can check that you comply to all the rules that are needed in, in making the project. You can also download checklists uh, from, uh, from this page so that you can actually print it out and mark the things that you have done and what still need to be uh, done later. Then there are a lots of this kind of optional uh, steps where you can, for example, see how you can use an online tool for communication or building projects together. And then finally, it also has a link to the, uh, the MOOC on Erasmus Plus that explains you how you fill in the application. And it gives you an idea that once you have been discussing this uh, part of your project with your partners and with your young people, then you can write this information in here. The final thing that I show is that if you join, you can go to any of these pages without joining and just use the content. But if you join um, the, hang on. So you can uh, collect learning badges. Like I said that when this, this is a learning program and we call it learning by doing, it, it means that we allow the young people to do things that are new for them. They, they have new experiences and we as the adults can then reflect about those experiences and help the young people to understand what was important about it and, and uh, how does it help them in their own life. So um, if you join in, you can have uh, Limonas, help me, where do I go? <laughs> you can go to any activity. So any activity I has know, one badge right. in, to earn. Yeah. And also you I, earn I, a badge for the whole playlist. Exactly. So uh, there is uh, uh, information on how you can earn this badge. So there's a task in underneath and if you do if you do what you uh, are supposed to do then you can get the badge. And the the good thing about this is that when the young people are doing tasks during the the planning of the youth exchanges and the implementation afterwards 
they can collect these badges and realize all the all the new things that they have done during during the project then it's easier for them also to maybe understand that that thing was new that thing was new i haven't done that before what i learned in in this project so um there is also a uh, residential training course on the star of europe where we go through the whole youth exchange process uh, within three days and there will be an online training version out of it as well so if you are interested in this kind of approach then also follow the european trading calendar and if you see star of europe please apply that's All it right. is that enough thank you very much Paolo. yeah uh, thanks a lot uh, i didn't notice yet any new questions so you just saw um, a resource uh, where you can learn about every single step how to go from the idea to the application and actually implement and, and share results and, and evaluate youth exchanges so thanks a lot power for sharing this uh, maybe yeah. i'll just point out that of course there are different ways of uh looking at the thing in in europe but there are a few countries in europe finland included where we don't actually grant any projects where we don't see that young people have been involved and the argument for it is that if we are looking at at the project in a learning program we we can easily argue that if the young people have been involved in the program for a longer time than just the uh week few weeks of preparation and the exchange itself then there is more learning in this uh do it yourself approach. so Pavel, just to clarify um uh, are you saying that if uh let's say a brilliant youth worker a very smart one with a lot of ideas if uh, that youth worker meets another youth worker in another country they come up with a great idea and they describe how they're gonna select people later um that actually and they uh, write a perfect application do you say that actually this might not be supported because young people are missing uh definitely not be supported in finland no there is no way we we, we will grant that first of all if you look at the the fact that these projects are young people's projects then therefore they should be based on their needs many times in applications i see that the base basis or the need of the program comes from uh, um, United Nations report or, or a OECD report or a EU report that this is what generally happens in the world and therefore we have to do something and teach the young people this it's a weird approach I think it's a very Soviet approach that adults think that they know what the young people need the young people definitely need know what they need and what interests them and youth work is support it's enabling it's it's doing something that the young people can reach the potential that they have the other thing that i maybe have to say is that um, all the young people can do something there are young people that have a, a lot of different obstacles in their participation but they can still have opinions about what country to involve, what food to eat, what kind of activity is nice. Um, of course, if the young people need more support than the adults will provide it. And not all the program has to be done by the young people. You can blend and as long as you agree with the groups. Uh, but the idea is that youth exchanges are not uh, projects that adults or organizations make for young people youth exchanges are young people's own projects that's the original idea and i think that in the new program it will be highlighted more thanks a lot Paul, for the answer and clarification i think you made it very clear uh and uh, yeah uh, now a few words about the uh, online course environment and what you can find at the online course 
in case you still didn't discover all the materials. I saw some people wrote in the chat saying, hey, I went through all the resources already and that's why I'm joining the webinar. Maybe other people did the other way around. They found out about the webinar and just joined it now. So I'll just share the screen uh, to show uh, what you can find on our online course, which is hosted on the Canvas uh, free for teachers platform. Uh, Nerius already posted in the chat how you can get enrolled if you're not there yet. Um, so when you start the course, you will start with uh, an overview of different uh, possibilities that Erasmus Plus has to offer for the field of youth. And it has what to offer for both young people and youth workers, and uh, you can explore all the possibilities there. Uh, this month and next month, we will be hosting a series of webinars on youth exchanges. And when you go there, you can start from any action you want. So if you um, click on youth exchanges, uh, you get to that module, and then it's plenty of materials there. I already added a few links to the uh, upcoming webinars. Uh, we are planning to do one webinar at the end of June where we're going to look at uh, tools for youth exchanges. So what methods uh, you can use for preparing, doing, and, and evaluating youth exchange. Um, and then on the 9th of July, we're going to have one more webinar where we're going to look at similarities and differences between youth exchanges and youth worker mobility. Yeah, so we're going to look at some differences and some tips and hints on that. And uh, when you uh, go on Youth Exchange, maybe I go through the module view, uh, you are able to see some videos. Uh, so you can explore what a Youth Exchange is, what are the rules of the game. Uh, you can go through some quizzes and check your knowledge if you feel you really know it well. Uh, and then you will go through some basic steps, uh, how to, for example, create a group, a youth group of youth exchange. And this is explained not in a kind of long written text, but this is explained in a short, uh, snappy videos that really transmit the whole idea. So how you create a partnership, there was this discussion. There are uh, different links and different tips how to do it. Yeah. And also, if you are not from so-called program country, you're not from EU and not from one of the countries that has own national agency, you can explore still how you can be a partner and how you can host a youth exchange in your country. Because uh, all the neighboring countries around EU also can take part in the program. And we invite you to participate in discussion um, forums there. And you can also learn how to design a youth exchange program how um, the example of the program looks like. So you can actually really see a practical tips um, that will make you, you know, in the development of the youth exchange. We have some uh, videos on impact of youth exchanges. Uh, we ask you to discuss what creates a good impact we also have module about youth pass and the value of recognizing learning happening at youth exchanges and also we collected plenty of examples uh, how the youth exchange looks like in practice most of them are in english or they have subtitles in english and you can watch and learn from the experiences of others and actually meet peers on the online platform and discuss with people there and actually, if you go to a discussions uh, uh, in the online uh, forum, you can also see um, that there are some calls for partnerships or you can initiate some calls for partnerships. So uh, that's it about the course. We will meet with you online uh, or we're going to meet with you at the other webinar and roll to the course like our page um, on facebook just search for mooc youth uh, you can also join our facebook group uh, which uh, has a few thousand learners who already completed the course previously or they are still eager to learn uh, about uh, youth exchanges or other opportunities of erasmus plus so for today uh, thank you very much for our guest speakers for um, 
giving us your time and your ideas to Emil to Pavel and also to uh, everyone who were uh, uh, with us. And uh, I'd like to launch a question for you. So if you are checking on mobile phone or desktop, you should be able to see uh, a question, how useful was this webinar for you? And there are four options, very useful, somewhat useful, not very useful, or you expect something different. If you joined via web version, maybe you don't see the poll, but at least you can write in the chat um, and share a little bit how was this webinar for you. And uh, I'll wait a little bit for the votes to come in and then I'll end the poll. We have 80% of people who voted already. Two, three. Okay, so I'm probably gonna close the poll. No new votes coming in and I can share the result. So seems that people found it uh, very useful or somewhat useful. So uh, make sure to, to comment and give us a feedback on the Canvas network. You can always uh, write us a message saying what else you would expect or what are the topics that you would like to have a webinar on because we will continue organizing such events uh, further on throughout the year. And uh, you probably know that it's the last year of Erasmus Plus program, but there will be a new program coming in. And we're gonna come back with some news in the autumn. Okay, so thank you very much and then have a good rest of the week and good summer. <laughs>